I don't believe that he was guilty of the crime. I'm extremely convinced that he was guilty. Now I wonder if, he, if the guy really did it. I would hate to think that there was an innocent man, but I'm not going to second guess any other departments. You, know. you have to stand in the offender's shoe and consider what was possibly going on in his mind in that moment. He needed to frame someone. He needed to put the attention elsewhere. He needed to make someone else culpable for this crime. He needed to frame someone. I remember Donna Richmond, she went to uh, uh, high school. She rode her bike down the tracks. She was kidnapped right there at the tracks. We started a search and I got my dog out. And we searched uh, orchards, but we couldn't find her. You know. Donna Jo Richmond was 14 years old the day after Christmas in 1975. She reportedly left her boyfriend's house on her bike at 3.45 in the afternoon in a hurry to make it home before 4. She never did. All I did was just took my dog out and, and uh, just, just looked for the, just searched, you know. Local papers reported that her brother found her bicycle hours later in an orange grove half a mile away from her home. Papers also reported that her underwear, some items of clothing, and one of her shoes were found by the bike. That story later changed. So, so here, right here, yes. This would be where they found the bicycle. Correct. The, she's reported missing starting at around 5.30. The brother comes to this spot uh, first, and he finds the bicycle sometime between 6.30 and 7 p.m. According to the Tulare County Sheriff's Office, among the items found next to the bike was an invoice book with a name on it, Clifton. The notebook belonged to 35-year-old Oscar Clifton, who lived and worked as a handyman around Visalia, a town about 10 miles away. He was arrested for kidnapping and released on bail. The following day, a farm worker found Donna's body in an orange orchard, about two and a half miles from where her bike had been. The cause of death was asphyxia due to manual strangulation. Her skull had been bashed. She was stabbed 17 times, and although she was found naked from the waist down, according to the autopsy, there was no evidence of rape. Tulare County Sheriff's deputies went for Oscar Clifton. Remember, we were sleeping, and I woke up and I think we all did too, just this noise. Banging, banging yeah. on the door and yelling. There were several, I don't know how many, but several men there. They just kind of went through the entire house, anything, everything, tore it apart, trying to find stuff. And I just remember sitting there and just us crying and in shock because, I mean, this was in the middle of the night. And then suddenly, they're taking him away. One moment still stands out in the minds of Oscar's children all these decades later. They yanked him around, and when they were putting those handcuffs on, I heard a man say, we didn't get you last time, we're gonna get you this time. And I would had no clue what it meant. Independent attorney and private investigator Tony Reed has studied the case extensively for years. He says there are too many inconsistencies and believes Clifton was innocent. I asked him to take us through what he knows. Clifton's invoice book is considered uh, the, the, the main problem for the defense. Uh, there's no good explanation for why Clifton's invoice book would be here. Oscar Clifton never denied that that invoice book was his. He said, the last time I used it was in December 23rd in Visalia. 
and he did not see the invoice book again uh, until it was presented in evidence. Reed believes someone stole it from Clifton's truck and placed it by the bicycle, in part because authorities couldn't identify fingerprints on the notebook's cover, just smudges. If you want to get rid of fingerprints, you take and rub them. As we've mentioned, items of Donna Jo's clothing, her shoe, and underwear were initially reported in the papers as being found near her bike. However, police reports later declared that those and other clothing items were found along a road that led straight to Clifton's house from the area of the murder. These were key arguments presented by the prosecution. Oscar Clifton was convicted for Donna Jo Richmond's murder in July of 1976. It was the last thing his family expected. You know, we were confident that he was going to be found not guilty and that um, the truth would somehow come out. And it, it never came out. It, you know, and for years afterwards, um, you know, he tried and he tried and he tried. Clifton spent 38 years in prison and died in prison, always claiming his innocence. And he told me that they had told him, the parole officers or whatever had told him, if you will admit guilt and say that you're sorry for what you did, there's a possibility you could get out on parole. He refused. He said, I am not guilty and I'm not going to leave that, leave here with that on my name. Do you think your father was framed? Somebody who's harmed somebody isn't going to leave a, a trail to their front door and they're not going to leave their invoice book perfectly placed underneath her bicycle. So yes, um, why? I don't know. Maybe he was the perfect scapegoat.